Hello! This is Rebecca from Chemnitz, and in honor of my 29th birthday, which happens to be today, the day that I'm filming this, I was going to do a dyeing experiment with some purple Kool-Aid, but then this wonderful, wonderful package arrived in the mail. And after some hyperventilating, I realized that I need to pl start planning my first spinning project on my very own Fantasia spinning wheel. Yay! So instead, I'm going to be dyeing some fiber. <laughs> and so this is really less of an experiment because I want to make sure that I get a color I love so I can spin it on my brand new spinning wheel. But I am going to be hand painting some fiber today. Yay! As I'm pre-soaking the fiber, I'm going to start mixing my dyes. In each of these four cups, I have one cup of water and one and a half teaspoons of white vinegar. Um, and I'm going to be dyeing a total of 100 grams of fiber, just Peruvian, unspun Peruvian Highland wool. And so I'm just totally making up everything as I go because I wasn't planning on dyeing any more yarn for a while. And, well, I, ha I now have stuff that I'm going to need to spin, so i got to get going. Now, anything for myself is going to need to involve a lot of purple. Purple is by far my favorite color. Um, so I'm going to use this Wilton's paste um, that I recently pur purchased. And the paste is, I don't have a ton of experience dealing with pastes, but it's very concentrated, and so a little bit goes a long way. But... All right, I did not get a little bit, I got a lot of it. So we're gonna add some of this to one and two. Look at how deep that color is, woo-wee! Two different containers. You can see I still have color on this fork that I've been using. So, you know, this is going to go a long way, but, you know, we're just flying by the seat of our pants here. Uh, so let's see. See how the camera always looks a bit bluer it than it is, but that's a very nice, pretty, vibrant purple. Um, I am going to use one of those for mixing and another one for checking color. And so to one of these, the one without the handle, I'm going to add just some blue McCormick's food coloring. Whoops, I guess that's eight drops of blue food coloring. A little more than I had necessarily intended. Let's see. better way to test the color rather than the fork is to just dip a piece of... Okay, so they're both... I mean, the color wicks and travels, so they're both... They could end up being very, very close to the same color. The little bit of blue that I added here may not add much of a difference, but hopefully it will, as colors separate and do whatever they do in hand-dyed yarn, um, because purple can have a tend to break, um, hopefully we'll end up with some really cool color variations. Um, let's I also wanted to have, I think, some green. Approximately 12 drops, not exact. And so as is, you know, this is a pretty bright green, which actually I think I'll keep. Um, you know, a little bit of bright green with some purples. But maybe add some more blue to each of those. 
Oh man, a mix of all my favorite colors in the world. So it's a little hard to tell. Oh, I guess you can tell that this is a bluer green than the previous one. But all right, so I will be back once my yarn has stopped soaking and then we'll start doing some fun hand painting. And so what I'm really hoping, and I guess to turn this into an experiment, haha, I'm hoping that we will see some breaking of the reds of the colors that are within the purple. Um, I think that that would be extremely cool and give this some really great character for being my first uh, hand dyed, hand spun on a wheel project, and maybe even potentially my first hand plied project as well. I have yet to ply any yarn that I've spun. But that won't be videotaped. That'll just, you know, be shared with pictures later on. So I will be back when I'm ready to start painting. So while I was letting the yarn soak, I realized that I needed some dry roving to spin right away. So I did a quick run to my local yarn store, Clothes Knits. Yay, you guys are awesome and shared my exciting over my, my exciting news. But I've now squeezed most of the water out of this roving and this is the bare wool of the Andes roving from Knit Picks and now I'm ready to start adding the dye. Um, so I'm going to start, let me see, I guess you can't really see the dyes, um, but I have these, oh that's a lot bluer than I would have expected. Interesting, because this was Oh, it's possible some of the red has crashed out from the vinegar that I added. But this was just pure violet, uh, pure violet food coloring. Uh, but we'll see if this one that I added some blue to is actually a different. Oh, that's clearly. Well, can you see? Not really. You can't really tell. In my eyes, this one looks like a, well, a subtly different color. But ultimately, the important part is that the final product is going to be awesome. And I probably have way too much dye for my needs. But again, that doesn't matter. Um. Oh, but look! When I squish it, when I squish it, you can see the purple. The shadows. But see, you can see the purple lines. So that's cool. So I think the answer is yes, the colors are going to break. Oh, that's so cool looking. that this is so cool that I may not use the green that I mixed up at all. And so if you've watched many, many of my past tutorials, you would know that red absorbs to yarn faster than blues, which is why we see red at the center and the blue sort of wicking further out. So whether or not there will actually be any differences between these two, the two shades of purple that I've mixed up, I don't know. But the red does wick, or sorry, does absorb to the yarn first and the blue kind of wicks out, which is why we're seeing um, when I press down these purple, these purple lines. And you can see that the water that I'm squishing looks very blue. Oh, that's so pretty. So as I'm dyeing the yarn, I wanted to check the other side to see what was happening. And as you can see, the purple color isn't going all the way through. 
But I'm not very concerned because I do want there to be some twists and cool effects. I just want to try to remove as much of the white from the yarn as possible. So I finished dyeing the yarn and I'm now I added a little more plastic wrap on top and I'm going to roll it up like a bit of a jelly roll. I will then microwave it on high for two minutes at a time until the package is warm. And I will repeat that process two or three more times. So there's my yarn cooking in the microwave. Um, the first batch I had to do four minutes because it was only slightly warm at, after two minutes, uh, not quite bubbling hot. But then once the microwave timer beeps, then I'll let it sit for probably about 30 minutes, 40 minutes, depending on when it's cool, and then do another three or four minute nuke to make sure that the cellar, <laughs> to make sure that the color um, sets completely. There's a lot of liquid on the roving, and some of it, some of the color may leak out, but that's totally okay. I put a lot of extra dye on the fiber just so that way it would set really nicely. And yeah, this is why we put it on a plate so that way it does not spill all over the microwave. So my roving has gone through two different bursts of heats, bursts of um, nuking in the microwave, I mean. And so it's still pretty warm. And I really don't want to agitate the fibers at all. If I can even find the end. But to help it cool off a bit faster, I do want to unroll it. A bit. What is going on with this? Oh, I see. I'm trying to be very careful and not to agitate the fibers, but oh, is that pretty? Oh my gosh. Amazing. Look at that deep purple and bits of pink. And then there's even hints of blue over on the back. Gorgeous. So now I can leave this to cool and hopefully it'll be cool enough so that I can wash it when I come back from dinner. Please remember that when washing roving, you want to minimize the amount of agitation, especially when it is wet, because you do not want the fibers to felt. And you want to rinse it until the wash water runs clear. And it's hard to see with the bubbles, but there's a fair amount of blue coming out of the yarn already. So a fair amount of rinsing may be required. So here we have our washed roving ready to dry. Um, some places have a little more white than we would like. Like right here. And that's pretty white. But neighboring sections have a lot of dark color. So when we get to this piece, depending on how we spin it, if we rip a long piece along the side or rip off bunches, we can mix this in to dilute that white. The rest of it, even in the pale places, they are pretty blue. Um, if you want the sections that are more blue to adhere better, because there was still a lot of blue that washed off of the yarn, you could heat the yarn again or apply more vinegar to the entire skein or even, and, and not skein, roving or over dye it um, with some more blue. But we've got very gorgeous sections of purple, blue, and pink. As you can see, whoops, as I draw this out. So we've got Oh, look at that gorgeous, gorgeous color in there. So, yeah, after washing the skein, once again, I can say we very successfully broke purple. Um, and I will show you this again once it has dried.
So here we have it. Our beautiful broken purple roving that has flecks of pink, purple, and blue all over it. Um, I braided it, which you can figure out how to do on another tutorial on this channel, um, just for fun and because it looks pretty and shows off the colors. But I'm about to spin it on my spinning wheel. I'm not good enough at spinning to film that, um, to share that with you guys, um, but you can, we'll be able to see the finished product on www.chemnitz.com. So anyway, um, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I want to thank you for watching this knitting experiment slash excitement over my new spinning wheel. I don't always get the opportunity to show you what I make out of the fiber yarn that I dye because it's not always used right away. But I just wanted to give you a peek of this yarn, the first yarn that I spun on my spinning wheel. And this is also my first two-ply yarn. So it's not perfect, um, but I am really proud of it. And I really like dyeing with Wilton's purple dye.